With a full roof, the Bronco's a snappy wagon, well suited for work or play. Excellent as a family car. And the wagon roof is also removable. The Bronco is more than just another new vehicle. It's an all-purpose utility car with four-wheel drive power and traction. The first Bronco was a go-anywhere, do-anything kind of vehicle, and the new Bronco is no different, except that it has more features, more power, and, well, costs more money. The original Bronco back in 1966 cost around $2,300. Adjusted for inflation, that's about twenty grand. Unfortunately, the new Bronco starts around $35,000. Not Just a quick note before we continue. This video was filmed before Ford quietly dropped the base model for the 2024 model year. That means that the cheapest Bronco you can currently get is now the Big Bend, which starts at $41,000 after destination charges. Keep this in mind as context for the rest of the video when we talk about comparisons as well as price. There has also been a $1,130 price increase on the Black Diamond. Now, back to the video. To mention, my Black Diamond actually starts around $42,000 because of the off-road essential upgrades that it has. So the question is, with the Bronco's hefty price tag, will it see more iced chai tea lattes? or steep rocky trails. When it comes to the new Bronco, you're paying for more than a people mover. You're paying for a ticket to a land of adventure. The Bronco is more than just your average SUV. It's meant to take you places that few other vehicles can go. And that's exactly what we're gonna do on this review. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Black Diamond Bronco. Now, if you were like me and you knew you wanted a Bronco, but you hadn't really looked into all of the models, Black Diamond might be kind of confusing. Where is it on the scale of the Broncos? Now, the Black Diamond, it has more off-road chops than the base of the Big Bend. Why is that, you might ask? First off, you have the 17-inch Black Steelys wrapped around a 32-inch tire, but that's not all. Right here, as you can see, we have rock rails. So when you're crawling over rocks on the trail, you've got protection for your door sill because you don't want that repair because it would be very expensive. And under the vehicle is underbody bash plates that cover the front of the vehicle, under the modular front bumper, the engine, and the transfer case. All two-door Broncos also come with a steel skid plate on the gas tank, which is definitely nice to have. But the Black Diamond is not only tough on the outside, it also has a rugged and practical interior that suits any adventure. The seats themselves are made of marine grade vinyl, which is lovely when you have to spill something, you have to clean it up. It's super easy to clean up. It's very comfortable. The only thing I will say is that it does get a little bit sticky when it gets hot and I'm a little bit sweaty. But other than that, I do really enjoy the seats themselves. This car also comes with rubberized flooring. For some reason, they still gave us like carpet pieces to stick over, which is great, but also feels a little bit unnecessary to me. I have them in place. I only have them in place because I don't know what to do with them. Some of the other things that we have is a leather wrapped shift knob, which is really nice because in the desert, it does get really, really hot, but this will never burn my hand because it's not metal. And my steering wheel is actually leather wrapped as well. Then we have auxiliary switches that are pre-wired and ready to go for any accessories we might add on to the vehicle later on. Then we have a rear locking differential hero button that is silicone covered. There are actually silicone covered buttons throughout the entire interior, making it much easier to wipe up and clean up. The Ford Sync infotainment system is very nice. I actually do enjoy the screen here. Uh, one thing, I don't use much of their preset options. I don't have the navigation on this car because I don't have the mid package. However, I use Android Auto. It looks nice when it loads up, but my Android Auto, once it pops up, it has all of my apps in an easy to use system, so I prefer to use that. You can also use Apple CarPlay, I have heard. Uh, the one thing too is it is a wireless Android Auto, meaning that it will automatically connect through Bluetooth. I do not have to plug it in. It has a six speaker sound system, which I will say, it works for what I do, but if you wanted a more heavy duty sound system where everything sounds crystal clear or amazing, then you're definitely gonna wanna upgrade your sound system throughout the vehicle. Me personally, I enjoy what I have. I do have to turn it up a little bit to be able to hear if I'm driving on the freeway, but I feel like that's, in any base car that doesn't have an, an amazing sound system. In the rear, we do have two seats that are made of the same marine grade vinyl. And I will say from the outside looking in, it looks a little bit smaller, but once I sat back there, it's pretty roomy, pretty cozy. I will say getting into the vehicle is 
probably more of a challenge for somebody taller than myself. Me, I'm able to just get in by pulling the latch on the side of the seat, pushing the seat forward, and just jumping in. But we have had passengers and friends in the back that were taller than myself, and they definitely struggle a little bit more than I do getting into the back. I will say that's kind of a thing that I've thought about with having a four door is the ability to one carry more people because has three rear seats versus two but also the accessibility of getting to the back I decided at the end of the day that I preferred to have the vehicle with the two doors because I liked how it looked on the outside design wise versus the four doors that's just my personal opinion I do enjoy the fact that I have the seats back there that I can put down to be able to have more cargo space if needed but I'm also able to put them up whenever we, we want to invite friends to go off-roading with us also in the back of the vehicle we do have this molly system that are on the back right here of these seats though that's used to store things like flashlights water bottles smaller tools that they are easily accessible accessible. The other thing is that there are two cup holders in the back for your passengers in the rear, so no need to worry about spilled drinks here. You got a spot to put your drinks for everybody. Now, one thing I don't fully understand personally is on the dash here, it's nice, it's pretty, but I have two speedometers. I have a normal speedometer that is not digital, and then I have a digital one. I would have preferred probably a bigger tachometer to be able to manage my RPMs a little bit better, but that's just me. I mean, don't get me wrong. It looks very nice, but I don't know why I need two speedometers. There is a whole menu of things that I can go through here to display on my dash as I wish. So if I go to the off-road menu from my steering wheel, I can go ahead and go down and go to tire pressure. Now, the thing about this tire pressure is that it's an individual tire monitoring, meaning I can check the PSI of all of my individual tires. One of the things I want to talk about too that I didn't know I would get until I did was this really awesome Bronco toolkit. Now this is usually in your glove compartment in your car when you get your car and this is really nice because it has all the tools that you will actually need to take off your top as well as accessorize your vehicle like these bolts up here, things like that. So this is really cool and something that honestly I wasn't expecting and the tools themselves inside actually say Bronco on it which I know it seems silly, but that's something that makes me happy because it's something that is special to my specific vehicle, and I love it. The normal Black Diamond does come with a capable front bumper. However, I have what's called the modular steel front bumper. Now, something that's cool about this specific bumper is the fact that it comes with what are called Bronco bolts. They actually say Bronco on them, which is really cool, but that's not just what they're meant for. These also tell us that this front bumper is meant to help us add different modifications to the Bronco, such as a bull bar, a light bar, or a winch. Me personally, I eventually want to add a bull bar and a winch to this vehicle. And you know, one of those places I've actually seen the Bronco bolts and that we've actually already taken advantage of is right here on what Ford calls the trail sites. These do kind of help place where your tires are going on the trail, but another purpose of them is they also serve as a tie down. So when Ford debuted the Bronco, they showed it in a couple configurations. One of them was like a canoe on the top and running a strap down to this. We actually use these as a mounting point for our action cameras. One of my favorite design features of the Bronco is this grill right here. When you get a base model Bronco, the Bronco logo is actually in all black, whereas here on the Black Diamond, it is in white, which I absolutely love. And while I didn't get the premium package that had the full LED signature lights, I do have the LED lights and daytime running lights. I just don't have the full circle like a higher end Bronco would have. And one thing that me and Devin have found out about this vehicle that's just a special little fun thing is inside the light right here there's a little bronco easter egg it is this small little bronco logo that maybe only bronco owners know about in this bronco we have the 2.3 eco boost it's an inline four cylinder with the turbocharger that makes 300 horsepower and 325 pound feet of torque now that's one of two options excluding the raptor the other option is a 2.7 EcoBoost that's a V6 and it's twin turbocharged. This one only has one turbocharger, just in case you didn't know that. That engine actually makes 330 horsepower and 415 pound-feet of torque. Mind you, that's on premium fuel. You get a little bit less power if you go down to regular. So my Bronco here is a seven speed manual transmission. I actually really enjoy the seven speed manual transmission because I feel like I have more control over my car, whether I'm on the freeway or on the trails. 
Plus it's more engaging and fun for me to actually go through the different gears. Now we did try the 10 speed automatic at Bronco Off Rodeo, and that was definitely a completely different experience and it was fun in its own way. But me personally, I'm still happy with my manual transmission. The other thing to think about is the actual sound that the car makes while you're driving at high speed. Some cars are really loud, we've heard those. Some are more quiet. This one's definitely on the more quiet end. The exhaust itself is muted, so it doesn't really have a sound when you speed up. Me personally, I would like it to be a little bit more aggressive, so I do want to add an exhaust that has a more aggressive tone to match the rest of the vehicle. We loaded the inside cargo space with a 45 quart cooler, table, and chairs, and it was a pretty tight fit. We typically end up putting the rear seats down for more space. There's a couple different ways to fold down the back seats. If you're in a rush, you can simply push them down, or if you'd like a flatter cargo area, you can lift the seat bottoms and fold the seat backs down. We also have right here, these floorboards do lift up and they actually have drains in there if we needed to rinse them out. But if we wanted to put tools in there or something small to prevent them from rolling around in here, we can. It also has some tie downs to store some cargo and make sure it doesn't move around while you're on the trail. Over here on the side, we do have two LED lights as well as a 12 volt plug that if we needed to plug something in to charge it, we easily could or if we wanted to plug in an accessory. Right here on the tailgate we do have a panel that is accessory ready meaning that we can go ahead and add certain accessories right here on the tailgate. One of those things can be I saw a tailgate table. There's a few different kinds of tables you can put here. To close it all we have to do is do the reverse, close that window, and then go ahead and close this tailgate. Oh I almost forgot something. Right here in the back we do have one tow hook. In the front we actually have two. Let's talk about the coolest feature on the Bronco, and that is the removable hardtop. Now, we've actually taken Erica's Bronco down to the beach. We did a full day all the way from the desert to the beach without the hardtop. Erica, do you want to tell them about that experience? When we first started taking off the top, it felt relatively easy, and it probably is easy for two people of average size. However, I am vertically challenged. Therefore, I had a really hard time getting it up and over the frame of the car. So I'm actually considering getting one of those carts that you can slide in and it'll help lift it up and then take it right off for you. That way you are not worried about dropping the top and it's easier for storage. And I will tell you the hard top, while it's not silent, it definitely is quieter than a soft top. Um, usually when I'm on the freeway, I turn on my music and turn it up anyway. That way I'm able to just listen to my music. And to be honest with you, I don't notice most of the noise anymore. The Bronco is the ultimate convertible in my mind. You can take the top off and you can actually take off the doors here. And the nice thing about the doors is they're frameless, meaning there is no frame around the top. So when you roll down the windows, it's all compressed to just what's right here. It's super easy to do. We have not done it personally, but we have seen plenty of videos. It's basically two bolts and a simple connector and you just need a safe place to store the doors. Now with the two-door Bronco you cannot actually store the doors in the rear. There's not enough room so you're gonna have to leave it at home in the garage but in the four-door you can store the doors which is pretty cool. When you take off the doors you're not gonna lose any visibility from behind you because of the fact that the mirrors are actually mounted on the cowl of the car. Most cars they are actually mounted onto the door but they thought of everything when they decided to do this. They knew people were gonna want to remove the doors therefore they put the mirrors on the actual vehicle that way you don't lose sight of what's behind you. Of course, there are some drawbacks to this vehicle that I have to think about every now and then. One of that being, it does have a smaller gas tank size. Specifically, it has a smaller gas tank size than the four-door Bronco. You know, when I fill up at the gas station, I get less than 300 miles with a full tank, and my MPG is about 18. That's it. So where does the name Black Diamond come from anyway? It is actually a trail rating. So the Black Diamond is rated after very difficult trails and we actually brought you here to one today. A Black Diamond trail is for trail users with advanced skill who are seeking a higher risk level. According to the US Forest, so we're gonna go put that to the test and see if the Bronco Black Diamond can handle it. Let's go. So earlier I did say that I have a seven speed manual transmission, which is true, but it's more of a six speed manual with what's called a crawl gear. The crawl gear is on the opposite side of the reverse and you do have to go ahead and lift up a locker to be able to access it. Now, the point of the crawl gear is to be able to go at slower speeds while not necessarily stalling your vehicle. You can still stall the car, it's just a lot more difficult. So in order to engage the crawl mode, I go ahead and put my foot on the clutch, lift up the locker, pull it over to my left, pull it down, and now I'm in crawl. So we're at a part of a trail that has 
quite a few boulders, some deeper ravines, as well as being downhill. And I wanna be able to focus on actually maneuvering my vehicle around these obstacles. And I don't wanna to have to worry about even giving my car throttle or gas. There's a few things I'm gonna do here. The first thing is I am going to go ahead and take the car and I'm gonna put it into that crawl gear. And then once I do that, there's a lovely button down here where my goat modes are that I push and it'll activate what's called downhill descent assist. Now, what that does is it allows me to literally put my foot flat on the floor. Don't have to worry about giving my car any throttle at all, except when you are coming or when you are just starting to go. It will not stall your vehicle if your foot is flat on the floor. Crawl activated, downhill descent ready, click okay. And now, Just have to slowly, and my feet are flat on the floor. Nice. We're also going downhill right now. Yep, that's a downhill yeah. assist. Yep. Now there is a little bit of an uphill. Let's see if my momentum can get me up and over without any We're going gas. Three miles an hour. I'm not giving it any gas. And we went up and over. Still got three miles an hour. And we're not stalling. So can you adjust your speed in downhill descent control? No. So it's basically whatever speed um you were going i believe it's meant to stay at the most under eight miles an hour mm -hmm. i think that is the most i've seen it go to but on average it's about between four to six but this allows me to really focus on the trail and not have to worry about again shifting but Devin can tell you he can look down and he could be my witness my foot's flat on the floor yep and we're still going three miles an hour and are we stalling no. It, does it sound like the vehicle wants to stall? Because sometimes you can hear it or, or feel it. Not really, actually. Cool. So I'm at seven miles an hour. Took my foot off the gas. Let's see where it puts me back down to. Back down to three. Yep. Back down to three. So that's kind of the sweet spot. It likes to say, stay at a very low speed. It almost stalled there, but it didn't. Um, again, because when you are dealing with more difficult obstacles where you have to engage those two things. It's better to take it slow anyway, so you don't damage yourself or your vehicle. Pick the best path. Okay, so I got stuck here. So I have to do what's called engage the rear locking differential, which is a button up here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. A rear locker is extremely helpful because it locks the two rear wheels of the Bronco together so that they spin at the same speed regardless of the traction they have. This can help you get over an obstacle that you couldn't previously get over or out of because it prevents one wheel from spinning freely while the other wheel is stuck. With a rear locker, it essentially helps to push you over the obstacle by transferring the power from the engine to both wheels equally. This way you can overcome the uneven terrain and keep moving forward. And we're gonna give another go. Smooth like butter. Crawl gear, four high. Gotta watch my lines really carefully on this one because I want my tires to go over the rock. Now there is a rock up here that I know I'm gonna be able to clear going over, but I'm gonna have to get my right, my driver's side tire on top of another rock. And there we go. Perfect. I'm at an 11 degree roll and a 10 degree pitch right now, which is not too bad. Again, watching the lines. There's a big boulder off to my passenger side, so I'm gonna try to go off to the left to avoid it as much as possible. Good. Ooh, a dip. Now that rock did kind of touch the under body, um, the underbody bash plates, but no big deal. <laughs> Again, touch the bash plates. I could feel it, but nothing too bad. Right now we are on a incline, so I do want to switch to sand. But before I do that, I have to go through some of the other goat modes. So let's see what the goat modes are together. There is normal, which is what I've been in this whole time. 
Then there is eco, sport, slippery, mud and ruts, sand, and then rock crawl. So we're gonna go ahead and go into sand because I noticed further down the hill that I was sliding around quite a bit. And so I want the car to know, hey, I'm in sand mode. Now, when I'm in the sand goat mode, this is where I get that off-road only screen that takes away my pitch and roll. And the reason for that is because when I go into this goat mode, it automatically turns on my rear locking differential as well as automatically putting me into four high. I actually had just switched myself to two high just because I wanted to see what it switched itself into and it switched into four high. So from here, the car is telling me it's all ready to go on sand. So do you think this is where the black diamond comes to this trail? Like the black diamond portion of this trail? Probably. Right. Yeah, I would say so. Cause it's, definitely a little bit more um challenging i'm having to think more you got these two big rocks here I yep think i'm gonna, gonna try to go to the left yeah and then i'm gonna have to kind of go to the right to avoid one on this side we're going over the well i went over the that, one in the back so. that's okay because your tire went over it yep right? instead of anything else going over it that we wouldn't want to go over it but i will tell you um switching into that sand goat mode big difference. I'm not sliding around as much as I was down there. Yeah, this is um, definitely an area where you need additional oh, yeah. power. Oh yeah. So that four high runs. is nice. Ooh, I wish I had the pitch and roll because I want to know what that was. Okay, this one's going to be a pretty good. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> we are on a tilt right now, you guys. Are you freaked out yet? Nope. Good, All you right. trust me. Take this one nice and slow. Maybe. We're going to have a rock on our right side, on my on driver's side, so take it slow on this side. Okay, I also have one on okay. my left. You cleared on the right. Wow, this is like side to side tilts. Yes. Left, right, left, right. So yes, Devin, to answer your question from earlier. I think this is where the, this is where the black diamond rating comes in. I hope in. it's coming through on camera because we're going like this constantly <laughs> with like pretty decent rocks on the side of the side of the dirt road, sand road. I don't know. Sand. Sand, yeah, because it is slippery for sure. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, I guess you could say it's dirt, but yeah. it's finer than yeah, dirt. Yeah, it's loose, loose dirt for sure. Yeah. Yeah, four low was the way to go there. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Now it's looking kind of tight through here, so just take it nice and slow. Ah. <laughs> Pinstriping! I could hear it. It goes cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Yeah. You gotta embrace it. You gotta wrap your car. That's yeah. pretty much it. Either embrace it or wrap your car. Mm hmm. I guess I'm just gonna embrace it. At least people know I take my car off-roading. <laughs> Either that or somebody keyed me. You see that face? <laughs> Stop making faces. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not crying inside. I don't know why you're crying inside. I'm the one making a monthly payments on this. That's true, that's true. <laughs> This is it. This is it. So just a few scrapes and bruises and bumps later. <laughs> Check out this view, guys. Wow. Nice little turnaround up here for us. There you go. As you guys just saw, we made it through that tight trail, but look at the rewarding views. This is why you buy a Bronco. Erica, why don't you tell us what you thought of the trail and what you thought of the Black Diamond on the Black Diamond Trail? So I will say that this Black Diamond Trail definitely was a little bit intimidating at first. I actually feel like I probably would have turned around had I done this trail before Bronco off I would have said, nope, this is too hard. But now that I understood my vehicle and understood the capabilities that my vehicle has, and I trust all of the features on it, I can tell you it felt like a breeze. I just enjoyed myself. There were some tense moments, of course, but I enjoyed myself thoroughly. Uh, in regards to the Black Diamond, I love my Black Diamond, but is the Black Diamond right for you? That's up to you. If you're somebody that just wants to go on the fire roads to your favorite campsite, then you might not need a black diamond instead of base model or the big bend could be perfect for you. But if you want to take it on trails like we did today, you want to go enjoy places that are hard to get to in any other vehicles, but you want that kind of vehicle 
off the dealership lot, then this is the vehicle for you. I honestly have loved every second of owning my black diamond Bronco. I have never felt unsafe even on these trails where they feel a little bit scary at times. Honestly, this is the best investment I could have made in myself even with some of the pinstripings that it has, but we're just gonna call those badges of honor. You know, this, this has been rewarding, being able to come out here in the great outdoors and see this from this perspective is amazing. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We appreciate you guys coming on the journey with us. We had a blast, so we hope you had a blast watching it. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to our channel to let us know that you want more Bronco content just like this. And we will catch you on the next one. Bye guys.